Ow, I pinched my finger. Not me making myself bleed with that. I need a band-aid. <laughs> this is already going well. I've shed blood for the vlog. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a 24 hour readathon. Yay! It's been so long since I've done one of these. And the last one that I did, I literally conked out and uh, didn't really pull off the full 24 hour readathon. But we're gonna try again and today we're gonna prevail. I am fully prepped. Am I fully prepped? I'm not fully prepped, but I'm excited. I'm excited to read for 24 hours, and I hope that I can fuel that excitement all the way to the 24 hour mark. I will say I'm getting started a little late today, which does not make me very happy. It's almost 10 o'clock, and I was planning to get started at 8 a.m. A little delay never hurt nobody, though. We are committed. Before we get to it though, today's video has a sponsor. Today's video is being sponsored by Shelf Savvy. We love Shelf Savvy in this house. If you are a frequent book buyer, a spend all my money on books kind of person, wait, am I calling myself out right now? I am in fact calling myself out right now. Always calling myself out. Shelf Savvy is the perfect place to shop for books at an affordable price. Who wants to spend full price on books these days? Not I, Captain, not I. I'm always on the search for best deals when it comes to books that I wanna add to my book collection. And Shelf Savvy, helps me out. It makes it much less of a strain on your wallet because Shelf Savvy will scour the book world for you to help you find the best deals on hardcovers, paperbacks, ebooks, and audiobooks. If you're tired of putting in the work to find the best book deals, book sales, book bargains, and you'd rather spend that time that you use for searching, for reading, Shelf Savvy's got you covered. It's a fully free service, which is why I highly recommend it. So definitely check out the link down below in the description and sign up for a free account. They have a watch list where you can add specific book titles that you wanna get your hands on at the best price. If you're not seeing a bargain price right away, they'll alert you when that book that you're wanting goes on sale. They have personalized book recommendations and book sales based off books that you've added to your list. The one thing that I will never get tired of in life is book recommendations. Even if I'm recommended the same book over and over and over again, I don't care. Recommend it to me again because eventually I'll budge and read the dang book. And they can help you find deals on whatever format you prefer. Hardcover, paperback, ebook, audiobook. As someone who swaps formats with every book I read, I appreciate this. I highly recommend checking out Shelf Savvy and making an account because who doesn't want to save money when it comes to buying books? Who? 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 I'll leave more information on Shelf Savvy down below in the description. 10 out of 10, def recommend. Now back to the video. The book that I am reading for today's 24 hour readathon is... <laughs> Chain of Thorns, the third and final book in the Last Hours trilogy. And yes, I will probably only be reading this book during the 24 hour readathon, and that's because it's a thick one. She thick! It's a total of 778 pages, and it also looks like there's a bit of a short story at the end. I was gonna do a 24 hour readathon where I was gonna read the full trilogy within 24 hours, but I literally started that video the other day. I started reading the first book, and it took me like nine hours to read the first book, and I was like, this isn't gonna go well. Like, I feel like it's gonna take me more than 24 hours to read this full trilogy. So I ended up scrapping that video entirely, but I did reread the first two books. I will say when it comes to Shadowhunters, this is like the bottom of the totem pole for me. Like it's not my favorite. I might be feeling a little fatigued when it comes to Shadowhunter stuff. Like I might be a little bit on the over it side. That might be a big thing to say. I'm not saying I'm like fully over it. Like I think they're still fun books. I think they're a lot of fun, but like I'm just kind of over it. I need a little bit of a Shadowhunter break personally. I did enjoy the first book in this trilogy, like I think it's pretty solid. I do think it still is like bottom of the totem pole when it comes to the first book in a Shadowhunter series. Second book, I hate the second book. I can confirm that after having reread the second book. Like that is one of the most frustrating reads I've ever experienced. It pains me. It really just grinds my gears, as you can tell. And now we are here at the last book, and I'm very interested to see how I end up feeling about this one. Having felt okay about the first book, really not liking the second book, how am I gonna feel about Chain of Thorns. I'm very eager to find out. I'm realizing that I didn't even give you a description for what this trilogy is about. Basically, if you don't know what the Shadowhunters are, they're these people that fight demons and slay, 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 all day, day, day. It takes place in the 1900s, early 1900s, and it takes place in like London and Paris. Essentially, we follow these Shadowhunters, who have to kill demons, and they have drama within their friend group, and they have arranged marriages, and they have fake marriages, and they have like those fake marriages situations where they're falling in love with the other person. They've got people who are backstabbing. They've got just all the drama, all the tropes. 
That's the Shadowhunters. I know that that was a terrible explanation, but if you don't know anything about Shadowhunters at this point, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> but if you want to know more about Shadowhunters, google.com. Let it be your friend. Let it be your guide. The goal for today is to stay out of my house for as long as possible and to read, read, read as much as possible. It's just a very bad idea for me to stay in my house during these 24-hour readathons because I get very distracted with like things that I need to do around the house and it's like, no, you need to be reading, reading, reading. It is a very gloomy day, which is very unfortunate. I was hoping the sun would be shining today, but I think there's like a storm on the horizon. That's unfortunate. Literally every time I've tried to vlog recently, it's been super gloomy, which has not kept me motivated to stick to the vlog. Like I get very sad on gloomy days, unless it's like full on downpour raining. Those are the best days. I will take a rainy day over just a gloomy day with no rain. Like give me those rainy days. I realize that I'm full on procrastinating, kicking off the readathon here. I did want to mention this is the book explosion book of the month for the month of March. Our live show has probably already happened by the time you're seeing this, but this also is the last book of the month for Book Explosion, which is so weird. We are doing live shows for the rest of this year, but this is our last year as Book Explosion. I don't want to go into like full detail on the Book Explosion stuff yet because it will probably make me emotional and I don't want that to happen. So anyway, today we're going to be reading. I'm not going to start my 24 hour timer until I actually sit down and start reading. So I'm going to get ready, head to the cafe. Let's go. Time for reading. I forgot all about this little James Herondell bookmark that I was sent. Definitely going to be using this today because it's kind of iconic. I still need to recover from my another love oh. currently two hours and 45 minutes into the readathon. I'm decently far in, not as far as I should be. I feel like I should be a little bit farther, but I'm on chapter nine. I am 157 pages in. I've been dilly-dallying a little bit. I realized it's gonna be hard to update my thoughts on this because this is the third book in a trilogy. I'm not gonna spill the tea. I'm not gonna spill the spoilers. I don't wanna ruin it for y'all. So I have to be very vague, but I did write some notes <clears throat> and they're very intelligent notes, like notes that need to go down in history books, honestly. I honestly feel like Publishers Weekly is gonna wanna hire me after they hear these notes. Kirkus Reviews is gonna be calling me up being like, Jesse, please work with us. Okay, you guys ready for this? The dynamics between characters, slay. <laughs> Ooh, we do be dragging a bit. <laughs> the last thing I wrote is, <laughs> remember when I said I had shadow hunter fatigue? I take that back. Call me what I am, trash. Those are my notes so far. <laughs> I'm eager to get deeper in. There's some things that are really interesting to me in the fact that like, it's kind of bringing up elements that I've already seen before. There's some elements in here that you see in the Dark Artifices, that trilogy. This is giving like more history and background on certain things. And that's really cool. I always love that aspect when it comes to Cassandra Clare's books. It's just like how they interweave and like all the history and background that you get through reading through all the Shadowhunter books. It's just really fun. I still need to finish the Dark Artifices. Don't come for me. I know. I'm hoping this doesn't really spoil anything. I don't think it could. Could it? Let's hope not. So far today, I went and got boba. I went to the park, which was so freaking fun. I'm having like the best day. Can I just say? I need to take more days like this where I just read, where I just focus on reading. I'm not on social media. I haven't been on social media all day today. I've just been reading and I've just been having fun. I went and got boba this morning, kicked off my day with some boba, which is always the best way to kick off your day. Then I went 
went to the park and did some reading and also played on the playground like I was five and it was amazing. I felt like so carefree. There was nobody at the park, thankfully. Then I went to this like new cafe that I thought was a cafe, which ended up being like a sit down restaurant. And can I just say, I still get so much anxiety when I'm going to like a new place and I don't know anything about it. Like I don't know like what's on the menu. I don't know the vibes of the place. It just gives me anxiety. I hate it every time, but I'm glad that I went to this place because like I liked it. I had like a grilled cheese situation with fries. I thought it was just going to be like a coffee shop, but it was in fact more of like a sit down restaurant. They did have coffee on the menu, but I ended up just getting like a Diet Coke and uh, grilled cheese, obviously. Now I think I'm gonna find another park and just read at the park. I just don't want to go to a cafe right now because my stomach is kind of like full and I'm afraid if I layer it with another coffee that it will be a bad situation. Like I'll want to throw up, so I'm not gonna do that. This is a big side note, but I got new license plates yesterday. I'm big sad about it because my last license plates were iconic. I have my old license plate here, which is why this even came to mind. I'm just gonna show you why it was so iconic. That's why it was so iconic. <laughs> anyway, just thought I would share that fun little detail with you. I honestly need to get caught up on reading. Stat! Pieces in my room. Are you coming over? That's cool. I could use a little something to do. We could go outside, take a little ride if you want to. That's cool. I did what I was supposed to. There's nothing left for me to do. So now I'm poking out my head through. Time for an update. I got to chapter 11, which is not very far. I've only read like two chapters since my last update. That's embarrassing, but that's okay. I have some thoughts still though. I have some thoughts. Some things are happening and I'm like, thoughts, I have them. Brain filled. Some of these thoughts are things that I think that I forgot to mention in my last update, so just bear with me. First up, we had a sweet sibling moment between Oh my gosh, what are their names? James? James? I almost called I almost said Jace! In a sweet sibling moment between Jace and and Lily. Not Lily, Lucy! It's only been six hours and I'm already losing it. We had a sweet sibling moment between them. It honestly made me wish that there was like a little bit more like conversations with them throughout the books. I mean, there's probably enough, but I just like seeing them together. I get slayed by sibling moments in books all the time. So it was just one of those moments. We had some more frustrating character moments that just really grinded my gears. Really frustrated me. There's this forced element that continues to be pushed. Obviously I can't say what that forced element is, but there's this element that comes into play. That's like a normal element for like Cassie Clare books and it's just... Ugh, I... Ugh. I would let this trope slide if it wasn't in like every Cassie Clare book ever, but it's in like every Cassie Clare book ever. Just not my favorite trope. Again, I'm not gonna say it though because I don't want it to be spoilery. And that trope in particular, amongst other things, has just like dialed up the angst by like 150%. It's already really angsty as it is, but it's just like dialed up in angst and it's just... I don't know how to feel yet, honestly. Like, I was enjoying it for the first 150 pages, and then I just read those, like, 50 pages or whatever, and I was like, hmm, this isn't settling too well with me. There was this line that I want to read in chapter 10 that I just loved so much. It says, I understand that, Matthew said, a little wonderingly, how much love people have denied themselves through the ages because they believed they did not deserve it. As if the waste of love is not the greater tragedy. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so emotional just because of that line! See, that's the thing, like, Cassie books can be so frustrating, but then there's also, like, those, like, lines that just get you. Like, there's so many times where I'm like, Spit out what you need to say! Communicate! But, the other half, I'm like, I'm so soft. <laughs> anyway, I went to a park to read, and it was very nice, because I feel like there was just, like, nobody out. It's kind of a gloomy day, which I think is why there's, like, nobody really out. There was only, like, a few people out and about, and it felt like I just had the park to myself. And the park that I went to was just, like, so peaceful. It is, like, near a graveyard, and actually near the graveyard where my grandparents are buried, but... There's just like something so calming about like the area. It was like, getting like a little windy and then like it started to sprinkle a little bit. I'm at my library now, so I think I'm gonna spend a few hours in my library. Oh, oh, oh. I had a situation at the park though. <laughs> 
I was sitting on a bench reading, minding my own business as I do, and of course, this freaking wasp comes and decides to attack me. As soon as it comes to attack me, this like runner comes running by, and as I'm being attacked, I like whip, 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 and the freaking runner like jolted. I don't think that they saw that I was being attacked. They probably just thought that I was gonna like attack them, and I was not going to attack them. Thankfully, they did not attack me, thinking I was attacking them. Also, guys, I did not eat all of my lunch today, and I've had my leftovers just like chilling in my car, so my car really smells great. It smells like cold fries and a little bit of a moist grilled cheese. I know this is probably gonna be like terrible to like eat later, but I'm thinking this is probably gonna be my dinner. I hope it heats up well. <laughs> Why did I share that with you? I shouldn't have shared that with you. I should have kept that to myself. But you know what? Part of vlogging is oversharing. If I'm not oversharing, then I'm vlogging wrong. We're gonna head into the library now and get some more reading done. I definitely want to do a little bit of browsing. Not that I like need a book right now. You can't just go to the library and not like grab a book, you know? Who goes into a library and doesn't check out something when it's freaking free and all you have to do is bring it back eventually, you know? I'm gonna send you through a portal and into the library. <sighs> I wanted to make it home because it's supposed to start raining pretty hard soon and I just didn't want to be out driving in it I do not like driving in rain people in Missouri do not know how to drive in rain So I don't want to be out in that traffic when people are unpredictable I made it to chapter 16 So I'm on page 284 made some decent progress definitely have a lot more to do like I need to focus 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 <sighs> oh, I can do it. I will say the chunk that I just read I don't know how this book is gonna go. I'm just a little bit worried that things are gonna be a bit rushed because there's so many just like complicated things that are happening between every relationship, every friendship, just every connection. There's some kind of rift happening and it's causing so much chaos to erupt. Some of the things that are coming out of some people's mouths, I'm like, did you have to take things that far? There was one instance in particular where I was like, Let's reel that back in. Let's not go too far now. Let's not do that. But you did that. So hmm, I don't know how you're going to come back from that. But yikes. I will say that that's the thing that I'm like the most passionate about with this book so far. Like there's a bigger thing happening. Like an overarching storyline that is like developing. And like it's dark and grim and obviously like sca scary. Like it's scary for the characters. I don't really find it scary. But I'm just like I could care less about that. I'm more intrigued by like all this drama that is is unfolding between everybody and how we're gonna fix it in this chunk like we have to fix every all those relationships have to be fixed in this chunk before we get back to reading, I got some things to go over. I forgot that I ordered the Illumicrate edition of Chain of Thorns, which I have the other two editions. I'm a little regretful in getting this trilogy in these special editions just because it's turning out to be one of my least favorite from Cassie Clare. I'm not like a hater. I'm not sitting here like, ah, except I am kind of sitting here like, ah. I'll show you what the books look like. This is the Chain of Gold edition. Then we've got the Chain of Iron edition, the Chain of Thorns edition. It's like this pinkish purple moment. I don't feel like this set really goes together all that well though. I'm gonna be honest. I love Illumicrate. I work with Illumicrate. But these covers don't really go together that well. It also came with alternate covers I believe. Ooh, these are really nice actually. I'll do close-ups of these but we've got the Chain of Iron one which is very pretty. Chain of Gold and Chain of Thorns. I really like these a lot. I will say that I always have a hard time getting dust jackets on books when they're not already
properly folded. That's an issue that I always have. So we'll see how that goes. I got a bit of a library haul. If I do end up finishing Chain of Thorns, then I will probably turn to one of these graphic novels or mangas and just like finish out the readathon with one of these or a couple of these. First up, we've got Not Your Idol. Then we've got One Cup at a Time. It's a Cat's Cafe collection. Then we've got This Is How I Disappear. Then I have Beautiful Darkness. Okay, and lastly, I hit up Five Below because they got the best candy. I actually love Five Below's candy selection. I'm gonna show you what I got, besties. First up, I got Pocky. I got the mint cream covered cocoa biscuit Pocky. This might bring me all kinds of happiness as I read. I just felt like I needed something sweet to have while I read tonight. All night. Why does it feel like I've already been up all night? And I got two different flavors of Haichu. I got banana, which is one of my favorite flavors. Then I got acai, which I've never had this flavor of Haichu before. So I'm gonna do a little taste test at some point. I got the freaking candy of my childhood. I can't wait. I need to try one of these right now. I saw somebody on TikTok eat the wax. Pretty sure you're not supposed to eat the wax. I'm all for chewing on the wax, but um, I don't know about eating it. Hey, you pop it, chew on the wax. It kind of slaps, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, I'm into it. It's literally just like you're drinking the juice. Like you just take a shot of the juice and then you can like chew on the wax if that's something that you're into, which I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of into it. I like the texture of wax, <laughs> but it goes by so fast. Like you take the shot and then it's gone. <laughs> you know, you don't have that flavor anymore. <laughs> It feels so nostalgic. I feel like a kid again. Then I saw this Japanese drink in there and I just wanted to try it because I like watermelon and I like watermelon flavored things. And this is a watermelon flavored carbonated drink. It might be something that I enjoy. I don't know. We'll find out. I am going to reheat my dinner. Pray to God that that grilled cheese that was in my car all day does not give me a stomach ache. But I am not letting it go to waste. I'm eating it. Even if it was left in my car all day. If I get poisoned, it's my own fault. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna take a break just while I eat. And then I'm gonna get right back to reading. We're gonna kick freaking Chain of Thorn in the butt if it doesn't kick me in the butt. Okay, let's get to it. This is where I got lazy with the montages. Time to transition into the next update. Hello. <laughs> I feel like I've been to war. It's not even that late. It is only 126. That is not late for me. I'm typically falling asleep these days around 3 a.m. It's not something I'm proud of. I wish I was falling asleep earlier than that, but it just happens. We are 14 hours into this readathon. Got 10 hours left. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how I'm feeling about this book. Okay, let me just share some thoughts, I guess. I'm on page 547. We literally just went through some of the most chaotic scenes in the book so far. It was a lot of fighting. There was definitely some shocking moments, some things that I don't feel like I've fully processed yet, some things that I'm questioning. I don't know how I feel. I think I'm still processing what exactly just went down. And even the next section that I am about to enter, if I were to say the title of it, you'd be like, oh, okay, so, okay, some things went down. Yeah, some things things did go down. I think for me with this trilogy, I don't have as strong of a connection to the characters, whereas other Cassie books, I've had like such strong connections to the characters, I feel like. Infernal Devices, I freaking loved those characters, so I felt every little thing, every little pain, I was like, ouch, ouch, ouch. The Mortal Instruments series, even though that's like really low on the podium toll for me as well, I still connected really strongly to those characters. Like, I was a ride or die for Simon, Isabel, Alec, Magnus, mm, 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 mm. Dark Artifices. Again, I haven't finished it, but I felt very strongly about each and every one of those characters. And this one, I just feel so disconnected from. And I, 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 I even reread the first two books this week, thinking that that might like make me grow more of a fondness for this trilogy. But here I am in this, and we just had some like very intense scenes, some very like crazy things went down, and I just feel disconnected from the characters. I don't know what it is though, because they're still good. Like there's been moments that I really like. I like a lot of the dynamics that are established, but none of the characters have a chokehold over me. It makes me sad. How many pages do we have left? I have 231 pages left, and I'm tired. I kind of just want it to be over. Honestly, oh, I don't know if I should say this. I probably would DNF this if I didn't have a live show on Sunday. That's just my honest thoughts right now. But I am at the same time glad that the live stream is pushing me to read this because I feel like I never would have read it just because this isn't my favorite trilogy. And I'm gonna wanna have this read for the upcoming Shadowhunter books that are coming, so. I am very much so in the middle right now. So far, like it's, it's had its like ups and downs. Like the first little bit I was like, okay, I'm into it. Then it dipped, then I got back into it and it dipped again, so I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my jammies on. I've been like holding off putting my jammies on. I'm still I'm still in my jeans. I'm so uncomfortable in my jeans. But I knew, I just thought that if I came home and put on like jammies, that I would for sure be like. 
and would have woken up so mad because the last 24 hour readathon I did, I fell asleep during it and I was very upset about it. So I'm gonna get my jammies on, gonna get my pocky. Oh, I wanna try my watermelon drink. Let's try my watermelon drink before I get my jammies on. Not that I will even be able to review this because how does one review a drink? Oh, is it gonna be an issue? Oh, that is tight. I don't have a bottle opener here. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was gonna be embarrassing if I wasn't gonna be able to open that. <laughs> Whoa, it smells strong of watermelon. Ooh, interesting. It tastes a lot like watermelon, but not like artificial watermelon. Like it tastes like, it's like taking the juiciness of the watermelon, putting it in a drink and adding carbonation. That's the vibe here. I thought it was gonna be more like artificially flavored, but I like the fact that it actually tastes like real watermelon. I'm into it. I think I'm actually gonna have a coffee right now because I need I need coffee to keep me up. And I can't believe that though because it's how it's only 1:30 and I am like <sighs> I'm procrastinating now. Let's get back to reading. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Getting off the couch to get coffee and get my jammies on. Let's do it. Another lazy montage transition. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I have finished Chain of Thorns. I finished it! Finally! Oh my god. What time is it? It is currently 8.27. We are 21 hours and 47 minutes into the readathon. How do I feel about this book? That's a complex question. I'm disappointed, but I'm also, like, not surprised to be disappointed because of the fact that, like, I didn't love the first two books. I kind of went into this one being like, yeah, I'm probably not gonna love it. And that ended up being the case. I think that a lot of things felt very rushed and there were things that were so vital that were just kind of brushed over. Like really big things that happened were just like, yeah, this happened and we're gonna feel these things for two pages and then move on. And it's like, I think we need to like backtrack a little bit and uh, explore this a little bit more because that doesn't sit right with me. I think that needs to be explored a little bit more. Then there were just like the frustrating things that were happening with the different relationships and the miscommunications and just not communicating at all. There was like miscommunication and then there was just like, not communicating, and those two things, oh! At the same time though, there's something about it that was still fun. Like I still enjoyed my time reading it. It was still good despite all these flaws. There were still things that I enjoyed about it. Y'all, I'm really tired. I have two hours left though, and I need to take advantage of the two hours. I might like take a 15 minute break. Oh, okay, I'll take a 10 minute break because we're at 21.50. I'll take a 10 minute break, and then I'm gonna get to reading some graphic novels and see how far I get with those. Back to it. <sighs> it's the final terrible transition. <laughs> we did it. We hit the 24 hour mark. I was able to get in two and a half graphic novels. I was slowing down there towards the end, but I finished Beautiful Darkness one cup at a time and I got halfway into This Is How I Disappear. I'll share my thoughts after I reset. I need to go to bed. Good night. <laughs> My neighbors are doing construction. I'm gonna try my best to talk over it, but hopefully you can't hear it much through the end of this video. It's been a few days since the 24 hour readathon and honestly, it was a very successful readathon. I'm very happy with it. Did I love everything that I read? No, no, I did not. Which is why I think I wanna do another one pretty soon because I wanna do a 24 hour readathon where I'm loving every book that I'm reading. Let me wrap you up on my thoughts on the books that I read. I finished the hunk of a book that is Chain of Thorns. I'm giving it a two out of five stars. This was not the finale that I wanted it to be. The one positive thing that I'm coming out of this book with is that I felt like the characters were actually developed in this one, but it's a little too late. Like, this is the last book. The characters for me should have been developed in the first book in a way where they, like, had a chokehold on me, but that didn't happen. The ending was rushed. There was overused tropes, tropes that we see in pretty much every Cassandra Clare book, tropes that I am completely over and tired of, and overall, it was just a frustration station. There were things that happened that needed to be expanded on and were just kind of graced over, brushed over, and I want a redo. Give me a redo, please. I'm very sad about this, but also not surprised. Then I read the graphic novel, Beautiful Darkness. I went into this one thinking that it was gonna be like this cozy fairy tale book. And like, it definitely feels like a fairy tale, but it's like the opposite of a fairy tale. It's like a nightmare tale. It was dark, grim, and gruesome. That's honestly the best way to describe this book. Dark, grim, gruesome. It's weird, twisted, bloody. If that sounds up your alley, I definitely recommend checking this one out. This is also a good description on the back. It says, a bleak allegory about surviving the human experience. That's a good way to put it. Overall, it wasn't for me. I did really appreciate the artwork. I thought it was beautiful and stunning. Overall, the story just kind of fell flat for me. I would give it like a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Not my favorite. Then I read One Cup at a Time. This was a huge flip in terms of tone. When it comes to comparing it to Beautiful Darkness, this was like happy, lighthearted, warm, 
cozy. This is apparently the second volume of the series, but it doesn't feel vital to have read the first collection before reading this. It's literally about these creatures who frequent a cat cafe. There were a lot of relatable bits when it comes to anxiety, and also just like sweet little motivational moments and depictions of life and how mundane it can be, but also how special and hope-filled it can be as well. I will say it felt like a little bit surface level for me. I would have liked to have seen things be explored on a deeper level, but at the same time, that's not what it was trying to achieve. And I still enjoyed it for the most part, would still recommend it, but I would give it like a three out of five stars. During the readathon, I got halfway into This Is How I Disappeared, but since the readathon, I have finished this one. This one hit a little too close to home in terms of anxiety, depression, all of that jazz. In fact, it reminded me of like the last two years of my life, which are two years that I do not want to revisit. And that's more of a me thing. I'm not saying this is a bad book. In fact, I did really enjoy it. I thought it was a very interesting and real honest look at somebody's life dealing with depression and anxiety, the life of a struggling artist. We follow a girl who's working in publishing and she's kind of taken advantage of and she's overworked and she also has to manage a life as an artist and a social life. And then having depression and anxiety on on top of all of those things. It was a very solid depiction when it comes to that. But it was one of those things for me personally where I felt kind of overwhelmed by the content that I was reading and I felt kind of exhausted after finishing it. I would still give this a four out of five stars, but it's not a book that I'm like running to recommend to everybody. Those are all the things that I read during the 24 hour readathon. Again, I would like to try this again and read things that I feel like I would actually enjoy. I kind of went into Chain of Thorns not really expecting to love it, just having not loved the first two books. And I just want to do this again because I do actually enjoy doing these 24-hour readathons even though I probably acted miserable <laughs> during it or exhausted. I think it didn't help that I was reading something that I didn't love. So would like to do this again in the near future, maybe next month. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. If not, let me know down below in the comments if you have any recs for what I should read for my next 24-hour readathon. I would like to attempt a 24-hour series readathon. I wanted to read this full trilogy in 24 hours, but honestly, I'm kind of glad that I didn't because I feel like I would have just been miserable the whole time. So if you have a series recommendation that's kind of like short and sweet and one that you think I could read in 24 hours, let me know the title down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright. Tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye yo. Also, this is me announcing that I'm gonna get back to vlogging, even though I shouldn't announce it because I'll jinx it, but I'm back to vlogging. I'm gonna be a vlogger now. I'm gonna do lots of vlogging. Vlog, 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 vlog. Jesse the Reader vlogger era. Let's go. <laughs>